Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Black Psychologist Podcast, presented by the Black Psychologist Network, the Psychology of Love Edition, where we discuss all things related to dating, relationships, marriage, divorce, etc. I am one half of your humble and gracious host, Dr. Kyle Osborne. He is I, and I am him. And of course, you all know, I'm not flying this aircraft by myself. He is the Ayatollah of psychology, New Jersey's finest, the best at what he does. Ladies and gentlemen, my man, my brother, Dr. Jason Coleman. What's going on, good brother? Man, I'm hot. You know, it's a heat wave. You know, I'm good, though, chilling, bro. Um, you know, it's a, a special day. Of course, we got a special guest, so that's right. what's most important today, you know. But I'm good. How are you? I'm good, brother. Like you said, I'm, uh, I'm trying to stay cool. And you know, that's the same thing. Looking look for, for places to go just for the free air conditioning. That's about it. You know? <laughs> they said the beaches are free to death because yeah, of the heat wave. Sure, it's probably blazing out there. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going out to fry on the beach, but somebody is. If you, you better have an umbrella today, though, I'll tell you that. Speaking of hotness, we know it's only appropriate that when we're talking about relationships, we have got to bring in one of the world's leading experts in the field who just brings the hotness to all these relationship conversations. <laughs> Not only is she a friend to the show, she's family to the Black Psychologist podcast. And we appreciate her taking time out of her busy schedule to drop these gems on us, all right? You can find her on the conversation with the Kennys, Backed by popular demand, our sister in medicine, the love doctor herself, Carolina's finest. <laughs> What's good, fellas? It's so great to be back. I'm really excited. Of Y'all got a lot of hot topics. And as you stated, I love all things relationships. So I definitely am looking forward to touching on these, but you all know it's always a pleasure. This is definitely my kind of weather. Being a Southerner, y'all know I, I I like any any time I can have my feet out, <laughs> but you know I do keep the keep the air you know low seventies, and I'll even get into the sixties. So I like it cool, but I do prefer you know this time of season. So ready to get into these topics. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course, we appreciate it. I'm a, uh, if I have to have choose one of the extremes, I'd rather be too hot than too cold. I can't stand the cold, even though born and raised in Philly and we have snowstorms and so on and so forth. I I, I hate the cold. I'll, I'll take the heat any day. Yeah, me too. Well, I'm not gonna <laughs> say I hate the cold because I like wearing hoodies and jackets. Sometimes. Yeah, well, I, can I do can't say I hate the cold, but you know, it's a balance. You know, but summer's the best the best season. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, hoodie season is undefeated. I I'll take hoodie season all day. But were y'all born in summer months? Nah, I was born in uh, yeah. oh no, nah, I was born in March. Actually, I was born in a snowstorm in March. Oh. Man, I was yeah. born in August, so you know I got. Okay, I'm September, so yeah. oh, you know, like that heat. Definitely, yeah. but Northerners can appreciate jackets, leather jackets. I'm telling you, when I moved here, I had to acclimate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we we throw it on for the jacket, and we throw it on. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, listen, I already I it, a season in advance. I know what jacket I'm, you know, I'm gonna usually get the next year. That's just how it is, man. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Talking about the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad habit, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, let's get into things. Who is a fan of power? Who watches power? They say this is a big, rich town. <laughs> <laughs> of course. All I right. don't watch all the spinoffs, but I watch a couple of them. All right, you watch the uh, you watch Ghost? The... Yeah. yeah. All right, so listen. Michael Rainey Jr., um, also uh, known as Tyree, on um who plays the son of ghost he has to spin off uh ghost power to uh recently appeared on um ty ty james's live uh twitch live stream last week and in the episode 
Uh, there's a portion of the show where Rainey is standing in a room full of people during the stream where a woman, uh, a woman comes out of nowhere, which is later turns out to be uh, Tata's sister. Uh, she appears to grab his crotch, right? And you can tell, like, it makes him visibly, like, uncomfortable. He is shocked. He's uncomfortable. Um, and, like, you can see that, like, he's trying to, like, block her hand. And you can't see it because it's kind of obscured because of um, it's happening while, like, while other people are having a conversation. And then also there are kids in the room, right? Also, right. so it's, like, standing right behind the kids. But you can see that, like, she's going now. She's going in, right? And she, she's grabbing him. So um, he's he's shocked, he's uncomfortable, and he tries to like block her hand out of, um, out the way and such. So um, what happens is that Rainy kind of like talks to whoever he's with, like and like leaves the show maybe about twenty minutes later. Now originally, um, Tata's original response was that he was upset that Rainy left, and he was he was saying some other different things, and then he later issued a different response and an apology. Um, Rainy also. Uh, he released a response to uh, saying that he's still processing what's happening and, and things of that nature. Um, your boy 50, you know, 50 being 50, of course, made light of the situation. He he mm -hmm. tweeted, um, wait, sexual assault? Nah, that's just male perspective. This was uh, an aggressive advance. He's fine. No charges are being pressed. So, you know, 50 being 50, he he, he tweeted that out and then he deleted it. Um, but yeah, so wanted to get your input um, about the video um, and what your takeaway was, Ash. Yeah, so I saw the video once you sent it. And so clarify for me, who was the woman that touched him? That was a uh, was... sister. That was his younger sister. His, so... I, thought, I thought that's what I was reading. Yeah, yeah so it his was his biological sister. sister, right? He was doing the live stream and it was like, all these other different people in the room, I guess, other yeah, families. Yeah, it was kids there. Like, it was two kids in front of him. Why little little kids. kids, yeah. Right. So, so he, his sister comes out of nowhere, and she, like, just goes in and grabs. Yeah. So, so, so I, I guess this is multifaceted, because when I read it, that's what I understood it. But I was like, maybe it's his, his, his sister's friend or huh. something. So different families play different ways. Like, you know, I know families that pass gas on each other and and motorboat and do all that kind of stuff. I'm an only child. So a lot of things seem kind of bizarre to me, just in general, that families and siblings do this family systems, which I'm just not into because I am an only child. Um, You could see his face. Now I'm wondering, is his face like this is inappropriate because we're on live stream? I can't believe you're doing this. So you know how people going to view us. It, you know, I didn't hear what he said in terms of his narration of how he addressed it. But um, I do think that it just brings, you know, it brings to the forefront that, you know, doing that kind of inappropriate touch, it can make a person feel uncomfortable. So maybe it'll educate people to kind of like second guess it because we're having dialogue about it as we are now, you know, it's, it's popular right now. But I do know a lot of guys that I heard talking about it, like when you sent it to me, they were just like, yeah, he different. You know what I'm saying? Like he grew up in this kind of sheltered way. And so you would expect that to be his reaction. But most people did, you know, feel like it wouldn't have been as, you know, I guess dramatic. They wouldn't have been as dramatic as some of the words that I've heard, you know, people utilize. I don't think that he was being dramatic. I think that it was inappropriate and, you know, again, um, you know, not knowing their family dynamic, was that the first time she did it? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just, it's, it's just yeah, it's, it's a no, lot but to that, unpack there. Not, not, I just want to clarify, not to cut you off, but it's just so for all of us, that's not, that's Tata's sister, right? That's yeah. not Michael Rainey's sister. That's Tata's sister. Tata's sister. That's the guy who was holding a live Yeah, stream. I didn't want to interrupt oh, you, but that's what I was okay. thinking. It's Tata's because sister. I, okay, that's where I got yeah. confused at. Yeah, it's Tata's sister. Live stream and Tata's sister came out of nowhere and assaulted Michael. Oh, Yo. so, so yeah, I, I, but that just seemed, yeah, it really does seem, so, so with that clarification, um, so yeah, erasing and scratching family dynamics, I don't know why she thought that was cool, but I will say this, um, not that I'm desensitized to it, but I, I, that's my, my, my work is with that population. I will say I've worked with several adolescent males that have been adjudicated for sex offenses where it was, it when the scenario was vice versa, right. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, so it, I don't want to make light of this. I don't want to gloss over it. Now, clarifying that and understanding that whose sister it was, um, she was out of pocket. I mean, because, because I, you know, first of all, we was all shocked. I mean, I, I know I was shocked when I saw it. You know what I mean? But we got to be honest, right? Like, anywhere in America, right? If me or you, Ashley, right? Walk up to a woman, right? And grab her vagina over her clothing, right? And say, <laughs> you, you understand what the point I'm you making? You see how we, they drug Trump. No, no, I'm just saying we're going to jail, right? Because and because it is sexual assault, right? Because it's you can't, I mean, you can't do that. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to, now, of course, I'm, I'm alive, I'm in the world, so I know men in the locker room and above, like, you know, men gonna make light of it the same way they're gonna make light of their sons, you know, having, you know, sex when they're 13, 14, some people, right? But they're gonna look, they would look at their daughter differently, right? But they're children, so we can't even really play that game on here. You know what I mean? So I, I know people, I know how people think, I, you know what I mean? So I, again, I know if I'm having a conversation in the gym or what some of my cousins are, they're going to react the same way 50 did. You know what I mean? Like make that type of comment. I get it, you know, but at the same time, you know, and I don't like to make it personal with anybody, but any of those people, you know, somebody walked up to a, a female that was important to them or or a young man or one of their kids. You know what I mean? 50 has a, a, a kid that's a, you know, tween or, you know, 10, 11, 12. If somebody did that to him and one of his classmates, he wouldn't look at it like that. Or maybe he would. I was you know going to mean? say that. I was going to say that. Maybe he would. Shot. I mean, because you heard, I mean, some people look at it like this, like Lil Boosie was saying, you know, he was taking his son to, you know, get whatever on his 13, 14th birthday or 15th. That, that's how some people view this stuff. But yeah. in reality, without consent. So would y'all you know, encourage y'all sons assault. to press charges? I, I, well, well, go ahead. I don't want to jump in. Because no. here's the thing, right? And I, I think that's also, in addition to, it shines the light um, that this is a bigger issue. That unfortunately, I think historically, men have... Um, and I'm generally speaking here, that have kind of minimized, right? Like, I can tell you that many guys have experienced this, right? Like, whether they're at a club, at a party someplace, right, or in a crowded event, like, it's hap it happens more frequently than, than I think people really acknowledge. And I think a lot of men generally kind of, like, just play it off, kind of like, yo, stop doing this. Like, it's not as – it's not as – much of like say uh, a grand reaction as it would be as Jay mentioned like if mm -hmm. they were reversed, but I also feel like this also um, highlights another situation that I don't think gets talked about, especially when you're talking about a lot of these live streams. It's just the safety aspect, right? Like a lot of times where you have these um, these live streams at people's houses, and you have people that are going on over there, whether it's like the Kaisenets or the Katas or whatever the case may may be. Like you don't know the safety aspect of it, right? Because now you're going into somebody's house, you don't know who the family members and not everybody's on the same page in regards to, like you said, Ashley, the family dynamic. Like, right. people play differently. So like, you might be on the person's live stream, but now you have a whole family member that comes in and does something kind of flagrant mm -hmm. and like, who's accountable for this person, right? right. Like, who, and that that's, I think, gotten with the social media thing or with everybody being able to have a platform and they doing it from their house, less safety aspects like that's not talked about because what if it would have been a violent situation right what if the lady would have came up or the person would have came up and hit michael or did whatever kind of situation different you know what i mean yeah, so, those safety yeah. it's it's safety. it's not it's not as subjective as we like to make it when it comes to the law like so that's why we have to talk are we talking like just personal or uh are we talking well, about um well, I got two. I got two exa re examples. Remember, like Terry Crews had reported that. Remember, a, a, a man walked up to him at you know in Hollywood at a, at a uh, like an event, right, and grabbed him. And remember, that's what um, Kevin Gates went to jail for when he was on stage and he kicked the fan because she grabbed him, you know, in the in the private parts. So it's like the way we view these things, you know, like it's. I mean, I and I, you know, I'm not saying, you know, he was right to react like how he did, but 
you know, the way, obviously the way we view these things aren't necessarily the same, right? Because, mm -hmm. and I only say that to bring it back to what you asked, right? Um, if, how would I react to a situation like that? I would, would I necessarily want the person prosecuted? No, right? right. But would I want a consequence? Absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? Some type of consequence. I don't know what it is. Like, if you do that at your workplace, it might cost you your job. I'm not, I'm not saying I want the person in, in jail. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't want a, somebody to get a free pass because yeah. some guy standing in front of me like, oh, it's a girl. You understand I think it what depends you're, you're... on who it is, too. That's very relevant because, you know, in the context of like, so when I was working adolescent males that had been adjudicated for a sex offense, I, one guy, it was, a, it was a sleepover and he pulled the girl he pulled his sister's homegirl off the bed. Um, that was a circumstance. Another circumstance was, and the judge was very lenient. It was only, the sentence was only, you know, it, it, it was under a year, but he touched a girl's leg in school. His, you know, another person involved was but saying- But you're talking, you talking about children, right? They were teens, yeah, middle school they, and they, up. Yeah, so, middle but then you're school. talking about children, right? Like we got, but they be, were all in that same age range. So I'm saying, in the sense minors, of, so the sentence the sense is of, not right. a reflection of of the egregiousness of of what they did. Because listen, I when I I, I don't worked in a jail with kids that had 500 offenses, like 500 different ones. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm mm -hmm. not saying it was 500 people because you know you might get offenses for looking at child porn. But they were still going through the program and still had to do the same year and a half as the kid that had one offense. You know what I mean? So I'm only saying that to say, because, I mean, it, it ain't no reflection of, like, they be getting breaks because of the age a lot of the time, especially when it comes to those crimes. Because remember, there's no physical evidence. A lot of time you got one kid word versus the other. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think a lot of times, especially when it, it is a double standard, right? Like, I think that it is something we have to acknowledge for the reason that it's not handled as egregiously when it is, say, a male, I mean, a female perpetrator or is, is doing the assaulting, right? If mm -hmm. it's like appropriate touching, it's really, society is, is not like that societal expectation that guys are going to report it or exactly like- But do guys feel that same level of discomfort? I think that that's what, I mean, whether, I, I think that's relevant, you know what I'm saying, as well. It is. No, I, I, you know what it is? I feel like we've been conditioned for us not to make it a big deal, right? Like, it's not a big deal. Like, again, I think it's happened. Thoughts, more. feelings, behavior. Right. It's been a learned behavior. It's been, you don't make a, con you don't make a big issue, right? Like, if it happens to you, like, if you're at a club or a lounge or something, it's not supposed to stop your day, right? Like, it's not supposed to, like, keep, you're not going to leave because a girl touched your butt or grabbed you or inappropriate stuff. I you react to it and you kind of keep it pushing. I'm not saying it's right, but I, I mean, yo, I mean, well, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I think it's, it's treated as egregious as it should be, just because of that kind of the dynamic or, or the, the, you know, of how it is. What you was gonna say, Jack? No, I was just saying, like, I, like, I don't, I don't disagree at all with how it's treated, right? But I think we all, to a certain degree, are playing into the stereotype that. You know, it, like as much as we're offended by, you know, certain stereotypes when it comes to women, right? We're, we're feeding into the stereotype that every man just wants to walk into ShopRite and have his, his you know what, touched by every woman that's in there. Like, that's not true. Like, you know what I mean? And and, and, and we can't go down that road because, <laughs> yo, I'm, I'm dead serious. Speak because for a yourself. Lot of, because, because I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be honest because <laughs> think about it, yo, we're, we're, we're taking... Uh, if we're being honest, like we're taking like by somebody's body, physical body, and we're saying like, yo, based on gender, you will will or will not, you can will or will not feel like you're sexually assaulted. Like that's crazy. I mean, to even go down that road, we can't. Like it's yeah. there's plenty of men that are in relationships, not in relationships, and or married that would be wholeheartedly offended and probably want you arrested if you walked up to them and 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 grabbed their private parts. It, you know, during the course of like a conversation or something, like I, I believe that because, and I know it's true because I've had a lot of male victims. And that's you know what I'm saying. And they, and and the male victims have the same responses as the female victims. You you know, so we could speak to why why 
the situations are handled different. But I but I don't really think we could kind of go down the road of like, yeah, you know, man, you know, they kind of just because then then it's like the red blooded heterosexual male is just sex crazed, right? And he just you want you walk into Best Buy, right? And you just I mean, I mean, I think about what we're saying on the subway, crowded New York subways. Should, everybody should have a boner, according to how this conversation is going. You know, I'm playing, but right, we can't, but we but can't. we can say things about stereotypically speaking and social psychology and attraction. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but and that, if women are more likely it, to get free things from yeah. men if they come in looking cute versus men going in the seat, right. like this stuff is research. Right, but, that, but that, but that is not sexual assault. And I'm being honest. But it's I'm not behavior. Be, it's like, behavior and perception. Listen, though. I love y'all. I love y'all. But and I'm not trying to be that guy. <laughs> but yo, I'm not, but I, and I'm not trying to be that guy. No, but listen. all I, but what I do for a living is interview sexual assault victims and testify. And, and I'm with. And I cases. talk to the perpetrators. No, hold on. I, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna wrap it up. And, se- and testify in sexual assault cases, right? Like that's sexual assault. No, it is. No. Oh, we so agree. I agree so, with that. So I, the law, I, I so started the conversation in saying we that, though, Jay. As, as psychologists, we cannot even imply that a no, man no, no, no. We can, would have we can a talk less about two things, though. Two things, things can woman. be true. Two things can be true. Okay. And when I say and I, that, and let, I, will, I will let both of you have the floor, but I have to, like, dude, I got to let it be known that there's, there's no way, like, I, I, I won't even go down that road. Like, yo, Male or female, if you if somebody grabs your private parts and there's no consent, there is no discussion about it. You are a, you have been sexually assaulted, and and there's and there's nobody should imply that you enjoyed it more or less because of your gender. Like no no, we, no, yo, no, if, no no no, that's ridiculous. No, that's just like saying okay, like so. What we're saying, yo, think it's, about I said law, think about what has law versus every ethics person. and morals. Think about we're talking about happening. law versus ethics and morals versus stereotype. Yo, but we're, but versus we're talking that, perception. Okay, so what right? I'm saying, uh, yo, no, nah, but but we have to be, we have to be, we have to be serious. Like, think about what has happened to every male that has implied that a female victim enjoyed a sexual assault. Do you understand my point? What I'm so saying what is, is different about the reverse? We cannot imply that men would, a, would be less impacted, like and then laugh about it. Like that's not yo, we have a we have the evidence right here with what Michael Rainey is saying. And then we're saying, nah, like come on, y'all, y'all, and then y'all. No, we're like, saying Michael Rainey said that and 50 Cent had a different perspective. That's what we're saying. No, that, that that's exactly not what we're saying. Like, yo, Michael Rainey said it impacted him, obviously. And that's what 50 I'm saying. Cent, as he's made light of depression, is making light of sexual assault. So his opinion is not really to be taken seriously. I wasn't even considering his opinion. It's not taken seriously, but it is an opinion. So that's all we're saying is that that, that type of person exists. Right. And what I'm saying right, is... But, but, but that's not... But, okay, that type of person exists, right? We also have people that say... Autism doesn't exist. Vaccines aren't real. Like 50 cent opinion on mental health and especially on what we're talking about should really not be considered a serious. I thought we were speaking light of what he said. I didn't know we were taking that serious. So, so Jay, this you know? is what okay, right. So this is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that unfortunately, whether if whoever, whether you're assaulted or not, right? Whether you're a male that's being assaulted, whether you're a female that's assaulted, you have that you should absolutely. You are the victim, right? And you should feel the way any person who's been assaulted, you've had your rights or whatever infringed upon. So you absolutely should feel that way. You're valid in that. What I'm saying is that unfortunately, with how it's been in society is that men, unfortunately, have been minimized or their feelings and their actions have been minimized and in, 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 in reaction of, right? And it shouldn't be that way. The only way that when someone like Michael Rainey, when they are assaulted, the only way that that gets reversed is if someone is pressing charges. So I feel like when Ashley asked that question, I said, yeah, absolutely. I would want somebody, if that happened to my kid, who if, if I had a son, they should absolutely press charges because that person she, that person was assaulted. The only way this dynamic or this stereotype gets shifted or gets, um, gets um, decreased is if actions are taken against, like consequences, like you mentioned earlier, are happening against the female perpetrators. What I'm saying is that, unfortunately, we've been raised just kind of historically or generally speaking for men to kind of laugh it off, right? Even though it does impact you, because it is. Like, you've had, like, you've been assaulted. It is, point blank period, right? 
we got to start taking action. People have to start making charges. Some people have to start taking action about that. This way, that would decrease that negative stereotype where it's just like, oh, well, you're a guy. You got to chalk it up. Keep it pushing, right? Because that's kind of been the agenda or that's kind of been the feeling that's been pushed upon us, right? Like when we walk in there. But you got plenty of people. You have plenty of guys or kids, like you said, that have been assaulted. And unfortunately, the perpetrator hasn't been either brought to justice or they have the person hasn't been persecuted to a full extent because of the stereotype that exists. So that's what I'm saying. Like 50 yeah. cents. I don't really care. He makes light because 50 cent is 50 cent. That's what he's going to do. But like, no, what happened to Michael Rainey was absolutely wrong. And he should press charges. Yeah. Right? Assaulted, like he said, and he said it himself. He said if the roles were reversed, it would be a totally different situation. But the only way that that gets, we start to rectify this issue, this catch-22 as it, as it personally stands, because a lot of people are feeling like, yo, he should just laugh. He should just walk it off, whatever the case is. But we got to start taking action. So I hope that he does. I mean, I'm, I don't know the young lady, but she did something that was inappropriate. There needs to be consequences for it. Mm -hmm. so that's the way direct, we direct, direct example of what you said, right? Cuba Gooding Jr., right? They arrested him, right? He groped a woman's breast in a bar, correct? Same, yeah, this, see, is, this is almost it's almost a direct comparison of to what we're talking about. Absolutely. Right? He was arrested, bro. As he should be. And my, my point is, and I'm not even saying I'm not saying she did or she didn't, but my point is once that video came out, whether she wanted him arrested or not, he was getting arrested because he touched somebody's body inappropriately. You know what I mean? So that's that's my point. Like, yo, this this situation is not being treated like that. You know what yeah. I mean? But we can't take it lightly because, again, it, it's a sexual assault on TV. Like, if it was if, if the roles was reversed and we even suggested that, yeah. bro, you get torn apart. Right? Well, we, so he would have been arrested if the roles were reversed immediately. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Like the he same done. They have to carry that same level when it is. The reverse right but it hasn't been because also guys haven't been coming forward or even when they do it's not treated with the same you know what i mean same energy so that's why i said it has to change like guys have to kind of start pursuing it and saying hey this happened x y and z just you know press charges yeah, yeah. like to, to shift the things and, to, and then just the final thing i wanted to say because i know we got a lot of different things we want to discuss today um is the awareness and i will say in my work like i said i often work with the perpetrators and oftentimes people are not aware of what the law says about inappropriate or appropriate touching and honestly i i didn't even know in in full totality i know i was going to my at the same practicum where i was working with the adolescent males that had been adjudicated for a sex event so i had on a red shirt and it was like um my sorority shirt and it said like delta but it was like the coat, it looked like a Coca-Cola bottle, the way the white was like on it and it said Delta, whatever. Right. And one of the maintenance men was outside smoking and he was like, oh, you know, like I had on his favorite color or something he said that was, um, you know, like he said, you know, you're lucky I'm not married, but he was like older than my daddy. So I was sharing it with my supervisor just in conversation because, you know, I'm new to the city. This is still soaking in the city. And she was like, ask me, did I want to report him? And I was like, for what? And at that point, I didn't realize that that was, you know, harassment for him to say that. And I'm like, I didn't want nobody to lose their job, number one. And number two, it did not make me feel uncomfortable. Like with the comment that he stated. So that's what I'm saying. There's law, there's perception. And there is like, I mean, even, you know, now when you do those, um, when we do those trainings that I know we all do that kind of talks about like workplace harassment it says, like, I mean, I think it's consider harassment, like, after you told the person, like, hey, I don't like that you did that. Yeah. So I'm bringing it full circle just to say that all people aren't aware that what their that their behavior is offensive. I don't think that he woke up that morning and was like, yeah, I'm going to sexually assault that girl that comes here every day at this time. And in and, and, and same situations, when this adolescent, you know, pulled somebody off the bed, you know, I'm sure he, you know, in your mind, you're not necessarily thinking I'm committing a crime. Like it's not always active, like premeditated. Let me assault this person. I mean, even now, if you ask people what sexual assault is legally, you'll get 15 different direction de definitions, assault, molestation, rape, like all of those terms. But I do agree. Like we're talking about law, 
but we were just having a conversation in terms of culturally how certain things are viewed and how we've gotten here. But I absolutely underscore everything you said, Jason, and pausing for a moment to ensure that anybody listening to this recognizes that in no way are we condoning things, but we're just kind of putting a period in that and, and also discussing what's true and how we kind of get here in these circumstances in the first place is lack of awareness of the legality. Like, I mean, I honestly would not have known that, you know, putting your hand on somebody fully dressed and not on their leg. Like, I mean, on the, it, it, that's assault. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't touch people. And I was telling these ladies, y'all better raise your sons to know ABC because this is what the law says. And you. so, you know, yeah, that's no, where we find ourselves. But I appreciate the feedback and like the clarity and the seriousness of um, us kind of touching on this. Absolutely. I want y'all to check this out, y'all. I gotta, I gotta check this uh this here video. All right, pull this up. There we go. All right, check this out. One, would you be okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So you don't mind a short king? More of the traits like being a family man, being able to provide, and you know have a positive mindset, and that's more important than looks and size you have been one of the first women to come up on the show and say like height is not like a big requirement for you because usually the ladies are like he has to be seven foot tall with a six pack and all of the things how much money does he have to make per year um at least a hundred thousand a hundred thousand a year right are you open to all races yeah going to 50 50 or someone who fully provides fully provides Okay, and what does that mean to you? Because to me, to someone else, to the girl next door, that can look different. So what does that mean to you? Well, um, in the dating process or like in a relationship? In a relationship. Um, I would say that I would have an allowance. Also that dates are intentional, like on the calendar. I get to at least learn an aspect of business or you're investing in my business. It's like present in the form of family. And just to follow up on the allowance question, how much would that look like for you? Let's say hypothetically, if there's a range, because everyone's asking about it in the comments. Um, I would say like 7,000, 5,000. Per month. Mm -hmm. Okay, P period, with a straight face, okay? She said, Ash, this is what I want. So, can you? All right, so this young lady is looking for at least a hundred grand a year, and she is demanding an allowance of five to 7,000 a month. To my distinct panel. <laughs> Go first, Jason. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> because I just crossed out three things I was going to say because I would say them to y'all off the air, but it's not appropriate. <laughs> Listen, <clears throat> God bless her. Listen. She's out of her mind. Listen, this just goes to the, I, I don't even really think, I think she's trolling, to be honest with you. I, I, th I think so too. I, I, I think she's trolling. You know what I mean? I, I think everybody saw all the fame that Kevin Samuels got and they're trying to duplicate it. Um, even the, even the, the, the guests, right? Because it, for several reasons, bro. First of all, on the banner, and there's nothing wrong with struggling. There's nothing wrong with needing a boost, this and that. But she just has expectations out of, out of her mind. All right. First of all, she's saying somebody needs to teach her part of their business, invest in her business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But what she don't have no business because on the, on the underline, it says that she's already, she's receiving public assistance. So what, what is she talking about? She's going to get that business with your five grand, seven grand a month allowance, bro. You the business. But I mean, anyway, listen, bless her heart. Her I hope she finds that guy. But I really think she's trolling, you know, um, because that's like, nobody's going to do that. I mean, well, maybe she's a beautiful soul. So let me not say that. But like I said, I, bless her heart. I have nothing scientific to say about this. Yo. It's ridiculous, bro.
Ash, what you got? So, so okay. So, in agreeing with Jay, one, I think it's clickbait. Like, I think this is a show that doesn't have a lot of, so it's sensationalized. So I think that she was just like talking just to say something that, you know, would get, like, we're talking about it. Like, everybody's mm -hmm. going to be buzzing. Shannon Sharp is talking about it now. So, you know, like in the era of social media content, creating people getting paid for content, I do believe that most things are clickbait. So like, I'll just start that there. Secondary, if this is truly what she believes and thinks, maybe she's one of those manifest, speak it into existence, put it in the universe. God can do it. You can do it. Universe can do it. Maybe she's one of those kind of people and she's just putting that out there. And it's just kind of like, you know, nam yo horenge. Like, I don't know what she, you know, like if, if she's one of those people, I don't know what's going on. But to me, it's because it's not rooted or based in anything realistic. Like when we look at the average type of income, I think the caption said that she was on welfare or something like that. So that, that's my whole point. Like You so, know what I'm saying? So she she kind of so she's a little unrealistic with um with she circle with back things. to invest in my business, though. That's not yeah. Bad. And then the other thing is now, you know, like I've heard people discussing, my third point is that, you know, there's no longer going to be like a middle class, like the way that, you know, like society is flowing and income and finances and minimum wages, you were either going to be halves at the top or like have nots at the bottom, like it's really not going to be a whole lot of middle class and in between. And so with that being said, you know, a lot of people have access to money and a lot of people are scamming and you know we we not that far from covid so people was getting money with that so i do think some people are have unrealistic ideas about finances based on those factors so like if you were one of those if you dated a guy that got seventy five thousand dollars because he said he had a barbershop and he really cuts only his son hair in his basement and he got seventy five thousand from that that money what was that what's that check call that everybody was getting the PPP loan. The PPP, they, but they, yes. but they still, but they still. You ain't get one, getting, did you, Jay? <laughs> I don't have no business. So but people right, so still the get, they still getting ran down on for those now. Exactly. So if you was with somebody that had a PPP loan and you kind of lived off that for a little bit, or you right. have somebody that is like, I like you know, I, I saw a post today and it was asking about that guy. I think his name is Kai Sanat. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name or Sanete, whatever you pronounce his name. Mm -hmm. they they talked about like what does he do and who is he and you know he's got videos with kevin hart now so this 15 seconds of fame is really blowing up and people are getting money that lady that was on we talked about her before the lady that was on um tiktok telling like 15 series of her yeah. and she yeah. got hundreds of thousands of dollars so i think that these quick hits of money have in and, and playing the lottery and all that kind of stuff has people unrealistic and the figures that they're saying are really not rooted in anything except for like fantasy and virtual reality things that they've seen. Right. So I mean, you know, I really do hate that, but but I guess you know because of our race and culture, that's definitely who we're gonna see. But a lot of these videos that I see with this stupidity, it is a, oftentimes sisters, you know, what I'm saying black women that are doing this, and it makes me think about like Kevin Hart. I mean, not Kevin Hart, Kevin Samuels addressing the delusion that people are presented with so i don't care if she is a nice person i'm a nice person too and i know a lot of nice people with good hearts and souls and ain't nobody out here talking about this whole financial thing because it's it, you yeah no so good luck to her that let me end with that good luck sis let me know if you find them because <laughs> I, I think um she's very ambitious all right and uh, I, I feel like, yeah. unfortunately, you have individuals like this that misconstrue or misunderstand the difference between two kind of that self-worth or having like high standards for yourself and then not understanding what like, I value myself. So this is what I'm going to ask for. This is what I'm I'm settling for as far as the dating market. And I don't think they really understand, like, again, the compatibility regarding, like, also the value. Like, because the market or the dating market is going to set your value. You you don't set that, right? Like, you can say, hey, I think of myself as this person and these are my standards. But for you, like you guys mentioned, kind of like what she's bringing to the table in regards to her finances. And now you're saying that, oh, well, this is going to be my market. This is how I value myself. And I'm going to get this individual. And they have to give me 
X, Y, and Z amount a month and they have to make this a year. Um, yeah, it just doesn't, it's not very, um, it's not compatible for one. Uh, very unrealistic. I like the word you used earlier, Ash, in regards to fantasy. Uh, and, and it's just like, like you, you're not, you thinking that the shape, not but I, this is where my value is on the dating market. And, but this is my reality. Like it just, it's just not compatible. Like you, you're not, <laughs> not the way it works. Speaking into existence. I told you she's doing some sort and, of. And manifest destiny. I, I'm not mad at that. I'm, I'm not mad at that. Um, It just, and the math didn't make sense because even if you have, like, let me get back to my research and stat days, right? My numbers days, right? A hundred grand. And then you're talking about five grand, at least a month. Like he's giving you that. How How is that person paying bills? Right? Yeah, she's right. looking for a millionaire, but right, she, like, don't even, she don't even know that she's looking for a millionaire. Yeah, like you right. know, that's what I'm saying. And like, she it, don't even know none. But she's no, looking no. for a millionaire. She might know some because see if people listen to this and they go refuse the shreds, <laughs> we don't know that woman's story. But no, I said she, she was a nice woman. I said I wish her the best. I, you know, yeah, I, me I, too. I sandwich, Good I luck next time. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to rip her to shreds, and I don't even want to go into. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> listen, because the Good longer luck, it Seth. goes, Good luck, Seth. Be... it just it didn't it didn't so. I think she's very ambitious, and like you said, ma manifest. Go, go for it. That's um. I think you you're overplaying <laughs> the value in the dating market. You're you're gonna be in for a rude awakening. All right. Um, I sent you guys uh, a quick article or or a tidbit of information that says African American couples have the highest divorce rate of thirty, close to thirty one percent in the United States. Is fifteen percent for white couples and eighteen point five percent for Latinos. So. What do we think is contributing to us leading the rate or the highest divorce rate? What do we, what's contributing to it? What do we think? So um, one of my friends actually posted this and I ended up having to block a dude on the post with this post because, and then like he had commented and he, um, he was telling the guy, you know, people really trying to have insightful conversations, but this guy was kind of trolling a little bit. Um, and he would, he, but it was guised under him trying to understand things. So let me tell you the first point that I said, I said, I think it's the financial hierarchy. Now, what I'm saying is not true for all. So I'm not making a generalization, but most of the women that I know, black women that I know, but oh, I ain't gonna say most, let me say at least half of the black women that I know around my age group and what you see on like blogs and different things like that are out earning black men. And when I, you know what I'm saying? Like in terms of just like I said, with my circle, like, you know, a lot of my friends are, you know, like have advanced degrees, like, you know, um, principal and maybe dating a, a teacher or they make more than their husbands, most of them, mm -hmm, a good bit of them. But I'm also from the South. I'm, I'm in a group of people newly getting married. And most of my friends all have like their doctorates, which is not very common for the majority of black women. So that's why I'm saying it for my circle. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I have sorority sisters that are physicians, double, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's, that's my kind of circle. And so they have men that, that hold their own, but they're no, they're not making as much as, as they do. And so I do think that that plays a part in, in things. If you have women that are looking for a more traditional setup or thinking that this this thing is going to influence it and and it ends up being like a power hierarchy that was like one point that I made and the guy was trying to like go back and forth with me on like the stats and I said I, well, I didn't say everybody I'm just talking about some of the things I'm sure we can because I even googled afterwards to kind of see what is contributing to these stats and what is the literature and the data saying and they did talk about like the educational gap so let's say we remove salary alone but we talk about like educational gaps I think that there's been consistent literature that says that like black women are getting like more education than any other group you know at this thing I don't know how true that is but those are things that I've heard so when I think about maybe like value system shifting and things to that regard, I would group finances, education, and all that into being a factor and why some right. marriages are not being as successful. That's the first thing. The second thing people talked about was like the incarceration rates. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, a lot of times I, I evaluate guys now um, and the, what their relationships and because of this kind of repeated incarceration thing. And not to say that this is only specific to Black. So every 
thing I'm getting could probably be referenced to another culture and race as well. But this is just, you know, me spitballing about some things that I've heard. So finances, incarceration, um, and also, too, um, I think just people getting married later and realizing that they value their freedom more than anything. Like I got married in my thirties and, you know, a lot of people, I think that it, you get married in your thirties, you've already lived and you got your own routine, you established, and there's still growth to have with that person. But I think like, if you aren't like rooted in like, this is, this is it, I'm going to be committed. I don't care what it is till death do us then it can be more appealing to be like, shoot, I really don't want to have to consider nobody like that as much. Um, so, you know, those are just, you know, some of my things. I'm sure after y'all chime in, I'll have some more feedback, but that's just me thinking back to that post and some of the things that we discussed and some of the feedback that women gave to me that were black women that were married, um, where one woman was like, you know, even she makes more than her husband and she constantly reassures him. But if, if he had it his way, he would want to make more money than her because he would want to, you know, provide. But she's like, it's not even that deep. Like, I don't care about none of that. And I try to remind him, but I do know that he's expressed it. If he had a magic wand, that's how he would want it. But let me ask you a question. Not, And I'm not even, I just want to clarify something, right? Was you, was you saying that, because you're saying they make more than they most of their husbands. So was you saying, and I get the point about them wanting to be, would rather be the provider because they make less. So I could see how that could end up <clears throat> ending a marriage or causing problems because that's like an insecurity thing or whatever. But but then you was also said that they some of them might want a more traditional situation. And to me, that says they want somebody that makes more than them, right? So they yeah. so is that is that them ending the marriage because they're unhappy? So they I'm want... saying, yeah, I'm saying both. I'm saying, like, you know, I'm saying both could be true. So on the one hand, I was given a specific like example where a woman shared that being her truth and that was her marriage on the post and i am saying on the other hand what could contribute to it is that if a woman starts off making the, the money the more the most money in her mind you know because the subconscious and what we tell ourselves is 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 a whole big thing and a lot of times people marry off potential like i said not just black women but women and people in general will marry off potential so like let's say that you meet your partner when you're working towards your law degree and you know, he's telling you that he's going to do ABC, but he mm -hmm. never does ABC. Like he'd be like, yeah, babe, I'm gonna go back and get, I want to get my law degree too. I want to get my bachelor's. And so she's marrying him with this idea that, yeah, I'm making more now like Michelle and Barack. I think Michelle said that, you know what I'm saying? She had maybe graduated and was doing, you know, was providing, you know, while Barack was still getting his degree. Don't quote me on that. But I, it does seem like I remember that kind of being a thing for them. And, um, you know, like, what if he never would have, like, graduated or per finished pursuing things? Then you kind of got married with this whole idea that it was going to be ABC and it ended up being XYZ. But the literature did talk about, like, just, you know, historically, some of the challenges that the Black family has seen that is still very relevant um, to certain circumstances and, and certain dynamics of things. And we're talking about like black men and black women. Cause I know the statistics for like black women, like interracial dating is, is, is very different as well. Cause you know, like, but I only noticed cause of like trends that's going on with social media and like this whole black wife thing. So I, I you know, I'm thinking like I, we're going just black women with black men. And I do think that that's relative. What do you think, Jeff? We need this contributed. Yo, honestly, I mean, I, I don't, you know I me, mean, like I don't, I don't know. I'm not looking at no statistics or nothing like that. But if it was just, if I just had to come up with a, I would like agree. I would jump in wholeheartedly with one thing Ashley said and hang on to it. When she said value, but I don't really, cause because again, right? Like, and it's it's my experience. So I'm not talking about statistics, right? Just my experience growing up, right in a suburban neighborhood with middle-class black people, right? And seeing black people meet there and be married, you know, and still be married. And then going to Howard and see productive black people meet each other there, get married and still, I know like we, like everybody else, you know, 
black women and men link up when they when they before they become what they become and they can stay together, right? What I would think it would be would be I think it's church to be honest with you. I think it's values. I think fifty years ago, I think in total they'll tell you people in the United States like your value spirituality, like the amount of people that go to church and believe in God and say that they do has gone by gone down significantly, right? Overall, we're talking about like twenty percent, right? And if we talk if we're talking about black people, African American. There was a point where that was like a cornerstone of our culture, whether it be Baptist church, whether it be masjid, if you Muslim, whatever it is, right? But I think in general, you see less people, you know, that are kind of spiritual at you know at this point in time. And if your if your marriages aren't really grounded in you know spirituality or religion, <laughs> you know what I mean? Then if what reason will you have to stay together? You can co-parent, you know what I mean? Like people, a lot of people don't stay together in other cultures just because they love each other. You know what I mean? I mean, you I, I talk to parents every day that it's like it's bad, but you know, they they like, yo, this is my husband. That's that's it right there. This is my husband. So unless there's some abuse going on, I ain't leaving, right? Yeah. Um, so in my humble opinion, like I think more African American marriages probably stayed together 70s, 60s before that because they was grounded in you know what i mean religion you know it was and, and, mm -hmm. and i'm and i'm not i'm not saying it like on a soapbox saying that everything was perfect after that and that but i'm just saying the mentality was different you know what the i mean foundation yeah right so when you that's can say that absolutely arranged marriages still i believe have the lowest divorce rate out of anybody and that's religion and, right so that, that's the point i'm making so talk, that's why talk I heavy, Jay. Is, yeah that's why I think the divorce rate, and then when you mix that with popular culture, aka I can get another man, I can get another woman, which is, you know what I mean, usually not necessarily reality, then you get what you get, you know. Yeah, I, I feel like it's kind of where, well, I think it's three things, but more two major okay. things. And it's kind of a little bit similar to what you were saying, Ashley, but I absolutely believe the first one is economic hardship, right? Like I feel like together, if the couple, is struggling and historically even we look at stats unfortunately even with the rise of um african americans kind of rising to that middle class and becoming more college educated and, and kind of closing the gap we're still as an ethnicity still in the minority in regards to like salary right and i think even if together there's like a financial struggle then that's absolutely going to impact the marriage like economic hardship undermines like the marital quality and stability so like if there's a lot of financial strife in them in that situation, happiness and communication are going down and conflict is going up, right? And that'll pretty much what you see is um I believe the stats are the two main causes of divorce overall are financial and then infidelity, right? Mm -hmm. So we're already up against the the financial aspect of it. Yeah, then it's more likely, unfortunately, that that marriage is going to end. And if we're already behind the eight ball financially overall coming together, if you have someone that's not great with money or you have someone that's kind of carrying the load, like you mentioned, I mean, there's going to be resentment. There's going to be a lot of miscommunication. There's going to be a lot of different things. So I feel like that economic hardship that a lot of couples, even though we see um, and based even on through our background, we've seen middle class, right? Suburban X, Y, Z, but the majority are not right. The majority are that lower SES. And it just doesn't end well whenever the finances start become a, become like a severe issue. The other part of it, I think, is it's an intergenerational issue, right? And it's kind of similar to what you were saying, Jay, is that it's declined gradually over the years, where before a set of time, you had people that were staying together for like 50, 70 years, right? They got married when they were young, had like 12, 13, 14 kids. And even if they didn't like each other, they were still staying married, right? Sleeping in separate bedrooms, but they were still married. <laughs> Right? Okay. <laughs> Not the case anymore. The case is now you have, especially for the past couple of generations, you've had the divorce. And like, I think African-Americans have been leading in divorce rates for quite some time now. So now you have a whole generation of kids that were either like saw divorce or they're the product of a divorced family being raised by either single mom or single dad. And so now it's a situation where they're more than likely because that transpired in their situation, that it may happen when they get married, like because they're becoming adults. 
So I think that also contributes to, like you said, mentioned, like, I think I can do better or I can find someone else or whatever those different things. So I think it's be, kind of become those kind of hardcore kind of traditional values are no longer the foundation of we're going to stay together and work this together. Um, people will kind of have that. I can just get a divorce and kind of keep it pushing. Right. So I think that's kind of been the mindset and uh, that lacking of therapy. I feel like that lacking of couples therapy, right? Like, unfortunately, mm. you know, kind of speak to this more. That's like, a big I, point. That's a talking point. I just great. got a couple. I need to highlight that. I need to be my market. Of, of, of African-American couples going to actual couples therapy is very low compared to other ethnicities. So even before, you know, if you're not getting that additional support, right, or the, that treatment, then absolutely, like, it's not going to go well, right? At least um, if you have other ethnicities that, um, you know, it's getting better. The stigma as far as therapy is getting better, but it's still not where it should be, especially for us. So if they're not going to therapy, especially in those earlier stages where you're already starting to see things are kind of come, falling apart, then it's more than likely that it's going to end in divorce. So that's kind of like what I've noticed is that if you don't have those three things, the heart, the economic hardship, intergenerational and then they're not going to, th to treatment or therapy to try to like resolve the issues then yeah we're absolutely going to continue to um to lead in in divorce rates so um it's kind of like a combination of both of what you say yeah man that's crazy i mean i don't i don't really again i, I when i was looking at those numbers i was just like it's, it's, it is very high you know almost yeah. twice as much as the as the next mm -hmm. and lowest number you know so yeah, but I never even thought, I never considered the therapy component. I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm studying for um, a board exam. And one of the questions up there was about like the Gottmans and I used their material. I think it was Gottman and Levinson and research that they had done. And they said couples are most likely to stay together if, and like, you know, it had a, of course it was multiple choice. Mm -hmm. um, it lived together in the um, seven years and all those different things, right? What, yeah, so this one was just specific to if they know how to manage conflict within their relationship. Like yes. that, that is what kind of like binds couples together and right. thinking about where would they get those skills from? You know what I'm saying? Like maybe, maybe we're doing a little bit more religious counseling, but we're not, you know, hitting the ground running with that. CBT that can you know like truly teach you like hey this is what you need to do when you're um you know experiencing this type of conflict or this is how this has to be addressed so I mean if they're not getting yeah. in therapy and you're coming from a situation where maybe you were raised from a single parent or you your parents got divorced right then where are you going to get those skills from right right because like you said the biggest mechanism or the most operative um aspect in regards to people staying together their ability to compromise or problem solve like you were saying and yep. if you can't do that then yeah your situation is absolutely not going to work so um that's why you know we got dr pool on the show she's she's on the job she's out here to <laughs> save her. that's the way yeah, it works. i have not had a, well i i have not yeah i was great say I, I was posting about that the other day i have not had a couple that I was working with that uh, divorced. I, I don't think this other couple was married, but I, I did work with them. Actually, that's what I'm talking about. You yeah. know, like, yeah, can, can <laughs> see, here's the thing, but this is the other thing too, it's, 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 it's much more of a discrepancy now and gender roles aren't being redefined. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if the woman does make more money, does that mean everything stays the same or does it look different? I think that other cultures have more of a guide because they, like they have books, they have, I was looking for a plan the other day on Amazon. There's the ADHD planner. There's the busy mom planner. There's the nanny planner. Aaron Condren creates these planners for all of these things. And I just think other cultures, you know, have the benefit of, um, you know, just having resources that we don't always, that aren't always customized to like us. I think it's also, I think if you look at it from um, just a family or, like, cause I think Asians uh, marriages are, were like the lowest, I think like at 4.4% or something rather. Right. And if you look at it, they come from a very collective background where it's like family is first. No, you're not, you're not leaving this situation. You, you were right. here. Right. So I think that's also something we have to take in consideration. Same thing with Latinos, right? Latinos was lower. 
um, again, coming from that collective kind of background, family comes first as opposed to the individual needs. So it might even be a situation where we're not looking at like the quality or of the marriage, right? Because they might be unhappy, but like you were saying, Jay, like, no, nah, we're not, you're not going anywhere. Else. But I think, I think our culture is collective. You know what I mean? I just don't, I, now, this is what I'm saying. You got to look, you got to be able to look at it. Collective doesn't necessarily mean that we're all unified, but our in the, think about your individual family. You know what I mean? Like, or my individual family. You know what I mean. I know, yeah. you know what I mean? But within our individual families, Dang. you know, we, now we might, now I, I, I'm not going to act, play coy. Like, I know the distinction you're making between right, right, the right. obligation to stay in like a marriage or going to a profession because of your, you know, of your culture. We, but I don't think that you necessarily have to take it <clears throat> to that. I think there's plenty of examples we got probably in our culture, you know, um, of behaving like that. Like, like, like put it like, I'll give you a prime example. Like, yo, in my family and in our culture, if somebody has a problem, somebody get in trouble, everybody comes together and helps that person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's, I, I think, I, I think, I don't think we can shortchange ourselves because I think, regardless of the situation that we, we, you know, we're in, whatever it is, financially, you know, it's, you, you, you probably see the best examples of collectivist cultures in the areas where they're the least amount of resources. If you ask me, I, I, I think that's one of the beautiful things about us, right? No, I think you know? collective in that sense that you're talking about, right? Like if somebody's having an issue, we, we absolutely come together to support Yeah, them. it's, I'm not refuting the relationship because I agree with you. Different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm just I'm just bringing it another way, but I'm saying like that's why I said I don't disagree with what you said cuz I know I know where you're coming from with that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and I just don't think it's to that extent, but same way a lot of stuff is on a continuum. It's like, you know, like we I I, I still think we we we, yeah, we right. could be considered that. You know? I agree. Speaking I mean, of we are in a, we are in America, so it's, it's you know, arguments both ways, but you know, we still have our own tradition. Speaking of relationships and traditions, now I got to ask you guys a question. We're all in very happy relationships, right? Now, is there or are there any places or destinations that you can go as far as like on an all girls or all guys trip that either your partner would not let you go or it's going to be a real tough conversation? Like, are there any destinations or places where you like, hey, babe, let me... Me and the, you know, me and the ladies are going to go to X, Y, and Z, and your guy's like, nah. Or it's going to be like, it's going to be a real tough conversation. Bro. You know what I mean? Same thing, Jay. You know what I mean? Like, for me, I will go first, right? Like, mm -hmm. For me, it's probably going to be the DR. Like, I, I don't think I'm going to be allowed to go to Dominican Republic, like, on an all-guys trip. Maybe, maybe Miami. I don't, I don't know. Possibly, but definitely the DR is on it. Like, that's not that's not gonna fly. And you can't go to Miami. <laughs> hmm? I said you can't go to Miami. I mean Miami. Well, you know Miami. Damn. I mean, this. Have you been to Miami recently? <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's honestly. I go down there for a boys trip with my brothers every year. Okay. All right. Well, look. Mm. All right. You should come. If you can get to Miami, <laughs> if, if, if if you don't get your, your, uh, get your permission it. slip signed, you know, get your permission slip signed, and you can come in. In advance. Third there is like, but see, I can get away with like Atlanta or Houston. Oh, Atlanta! Right, wait. Come on now, don't don't treat Atlanta like that. Atlanta. No, I, no, bro. I'm saying I love just, Atlanta. I was I'm just saying there just as bad from what you're talking about. Like, what's the nah. Atlanta, Miami? They walking Houston? around in bikinis and South That's my Beach. Point. My and the and it well, Alvin Grace said Atlanta is known for the strip club because I was going to say, that's like, that's like Atlanta is known for the strip club, yeah. but in Miami, Miami is beautiful. But I'm just saying, those two, but definitely DR, maybe not my Miami might be a, a tougher conversation, you see what I mean, but definitely not the DR for me. What about for y'all? Mine easy is Brazil. Go ahead, Jay. <laughs> Brazil, yeah, it's easy, it's Brazil. You ain't going there. <laughs> He's not gonna let yeah, he's not getting you know what time it you know what time it is if you got got that, you know, bros trip all the way to you know that passport bro. You know, yeah, yeah. So for me, because I introduced my honey to travel and he probably isn't like 
you know, like he doesn't have a place in mind, but I'm gonna tell you where I can't go. If I told him I was going to any type of Omega sci-fi Q event, uh, okay. you know, me being a Delta and all, he would, he'd be like, nah, that is not happening. I mean, homecoming's fine because he know I'm going to stay with my best friend, but he's seen, like, I have locked albums on Facebook from, like, undergrad and post-undergrad. He, like, every, every time you're at one of them events, why are y'all so sweaty? Like y'all always like sweating profusely mm -hmm. at these events and he see how the cues are. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So he would not be Q fest. Like they the the I'm not mad at him. All he gotta do is see I'm not one time see somebody jumping around the gold thong painted purple <laughs> and he's good. <laughs> I, I, I get it. The cues, they have this event and it's called the oil spill. And it was so massive that they had to have it at the fairground. Like no club could manage this. And they everybody was drinking this Omega oil. And so like crazy. I mean, like crazy. Like it was massive. I mean, like I had the time of my life. I was <laughs> I wasn't married then, of course, but a ball, maximum capacity. Shout out to Miami bros. But he would just be like. You going right. where to do what? Like, nah. Okay. All right. See, that's respectful. I get that. I get it. I really get it. All right. So here we go. We got the car, Brazil. You know, make it right. There we go. Okay. All right. I'm just checking. I, I, I that's, thought a good, I was, that's a good list. You know what I mean? Uh, I thought I'd check in with y'all. All right. Listen. There has been, there's a restaurant, right, that is making headway. Um, a, a restaurant in St. Louis, right, has divided the internet for its bizarre age restriction to maintain a sophisticated environment, all right? So um, a restaurant called Bliss, Bliss Restaurant in St. Louis, has set a minimum age for patrons uh, wishing to enjoy its upscale soul food and Caribbean food. So uh, it has to be 30 years old for females, 35-year-old uh, for males, right? The restaurant created this policy to help them maintain, quote, as they said, maintain a sophisticated environment uphold our standards and support the sustainability of our unique ambiance. Thoughts about a restaurant putting an age restriction, 30 for women, 35 for men. What do we think? Mm. I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I guess because there's other restaurants that exist with that, but I guess, um, I mean, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with it, but I also didn't have a, a problem when, and I guess because I qualify for it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't think about if I didn't, like, I mean, I didn't have a problem when Facebook was only for people that had degrees, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think that I, I, if I can understand the rationale behind the move, then it's like, it is what it is. But I also, you know, I want to make sure that I'm not ever being like an elitist and like, oh yeah, this age is, you know, every xyz-ish you know what i'm saying like like but i, I guess i you know that's that's my end thought i, I may have some more feedback after y'all chime in but i i get it i mean you know like they said that stake 48 had a mandatory minimum with spending because you had people that was coming in and getting the free bread and and buying one cocktail you know what i'm saying everything is a business at the end of the day uh there's this spa that i'm going to this weekend it's y'all got to check it out it's in the dmv it's called balian spa and they said that they like increased the prices up. And they, they, you know, a review said it was to keep people like, you know, us out that look like us. But I also read comments where they said, well, people was bringing like boom boxes and it probably wasn't us. It was just like a younger age of individuals that were doing those things. Because what we can all recognize and see is that a lot of times it's not race, it's age that's mostly relevant because I don't seen people of young people of all ages doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, this is easy for me. I'm perfectly okay with that. I mean, <laughs> I'd be easy. Oh. <laughs> and elitist or not elitist, no, listen. I, look, I'm not mad, all right? I'm not mad. I like going to, like, D.C. and other places for the nice brunches and different things. But at the same time, the, the you know, the, the, the boozy brunches can kind of get a little... You know, to be a little much with the, you know, ew, and all that. Look, I'm trying to enjoy my meal. All right. Like I want it to be a nice little vibe, but sometimes, like you mentioned, the age, they it, it turns into turn up. 
And I'm not I'm not looking for that, right? It's a good spot, but now it's turned into something different. So absolutely, I, I think that um, age and the maturity has a lot to do with it. And um, yeah, they, they don't, I imagine they just don't want the rah-rah with it, right? Like, I mean, it, it comes with it. Um, I don't know. My, my one question is why does it have to be 35 for men? I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Um, hmm, you know why. <laughs> yeah, I, I do, but I still don't like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, and it, I, listen, it might be a safety thing also. I mean, it's in St. Louis. I'm going to be honest, St. Louis gets it popping down there. So, like, sexy, you sexy, sexy, Hellcast, yeah. SRT. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, listen, <laughs> it might be a situation by the time you're 30, hopefully they you've matured enough, you've left all the, all the you know, the shenanigans behind you. Because, listen, they get it popping down there and you, you don't want to be a situation where you know, a certain demographic or like you said, that immature youth are coming in there and there things things get you know disrupted. So I'm perfectly okay with being an elitist, Ash. I'm all right. You gotta embrace your elite your elitistness. Embrace it. Yeah, my one of my good friends, she's an AKA in Houston. I'm going to see next month. She she tells me that all the time. You gotta embrace it. Listen, mm -hmm. here we are of a, of a certain age now. All right. That's right. You can't get everywhere. You can't get in everywhere. It's not. It's not my fault. That's the way it works. I mean, yo, they they said though in the article. I guess why I don't have no problem with it because listen, we got twenty one and up clubs. We got thirty and up clubs. Right. We got forty and up clubs. Yo, they said in the article that they did it intentionally to attract older clientele. So that's what they wanted. You know what I mean? So it was probably again that's the demographic they wanted. Older people. It don't. It just looks, I guess, weird to some people because most people are used to people catering to, to twenty one to twenty five, right? But we also got to remember, depending on what kind of restaurant this is, they might have felt like 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 Ashley was saying uh, with the uh, steak twenty one place. I might have got it wrong. I don't know. I don't know that spot, but um, they might have got tired of people not ordering what the minimum should be for the service, right? So, I mean, think about how well did you tip in your 20s? You know what I mean? When I was in my 20s, I had I was a horrible tipper. Whatever, you know what I mean? But I was a horrible tipper in my 20s. So, so it might have something to do with, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, them feeling like the crowd just wasn't mature enough to, you know, to either tipping-wise, service-wise, whatever, you know? Yeah, no. Nah. I mean, like you said, there's a reason why certain places say 21 – and over and the people that are upset about this um again are probably under the age of 30 right and i don't even think that this really would have been an issue i think what happens it kind of falls into that like psychological reactance thing like when you're telling people they can't go because you might have people that probably might not even gone to this restaurant in the first place but because now you're saying that i can't go i'm upset now they want to go yeah, you're, you're saying because I can't go, you're going to try to play the discrimination card or you're going to say, oh, X, Y, and Z. But you might not even like this particular soul food or Caribbean food or even like the vibe of this place. But you see what I mean? Now that you're saying that I can't, I'm, I'm upset and I don't like it. So, but I mean, yeah, again, I, think I, I think a lot of that is this too. Yeah. So I'm speaking from privilege. I make I make the, the age requirement, so I'm good. Right. See, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. We... We good, just like with steak forty eight, Jay. When they when they increased the prices, uh, you know, we wasn't saying nothing. Listen, <laughs> like you know, I, we like, oh, all right, yeah. Right. Ain't less, more chairs. Yeah, but uh, you know, more chairs for me, cool. <laughs> nah, that's real. That's real. That's why I said I admitted, like I was a horrible tipper, but I ain't gonna tell you when in my twenties. And what? Yeah. Um, well, well, I, I in my twenties, you think I had money to be giving away to somebody? I was trying to keep my money to myself. Oh, but now you a big spender. No, <laughs> I mean now, <laughs> now I twenty percent tip. Yeah, that, now yeah. He, yeah. Now, now he, he, he said twenty five percent. Me, listen, they <laughs> they, they saying it costs nah. for the truffle butter. He's saying, yeah, I gotta have two scoops service, of it. I, uh, listen, Ashley, I've, I've been five, out with five, Jay. Five. I, actually, I've been out with Jay. Jay just throw his card on the table and walk out. I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> hey, big spender. I'm going to let you put that out there. 
If anybody wants to believe that, go ahead. You just walk out. Like, nah. I'm just trying to stay humble. Like, one of my friends, the, the same girl that I just referenced in Houston, she uh sent me this Four Seasons jet that will take you to all of their properties all across the world for, like, X amount of dollars or whatever. It's, I don't know if it's 24000 It's probably more than 24000 but these things are happening. I mean, like, that's the one thing social media just constantly reminds us is that, you know... And, and and people think about that divorce rate, people wanting that lifestyle. You know, I know some women that would rather be a rich man's side chick than a uh, average or not so financially stable man's wife. True. Now that's true. And listen, I'm I'm cool with going to a spot like uh, this. You know, they're gonna be playing our music, right? They're gonna be playing that that nineties, early two thousands. I'm I'm good with a spot like this. You know, I can dig it. Yeah, I mean, and that again, I that's another point, right? They might be wanting to play a certain type of music, you know, embrace a certain type of like, you know, it might be a certain type of vibe in there that, you know, younger people ain't going to really get. So, exactly. You know, so, there you go. If you know the spot to hit up, when we go to everything ain't for everybody. Not nah, word levels to this. Listen, I worked hard. I don't, I'm, I don't want to be disrupted. This is my old man get off my lawn moment. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You know what I mean? Got that DR period. You you, you can't go everywhere that I can. can't. Hey, oh, <laughs> here you go. I can't. I can't. Yo, y'all are terrible. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, anything else before we get out of here, ladies and gentlemen? No, I think we covered everything. We just got to do this again soon. Yeah, we hit I all the topics. <laughs> we hit all the topics, but it's a, it's a good uh, reintroduction, though. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ash, we got to do this. Like you mentioned, we have to do this again. Uh, we got to, you know, link up more. We got to do our thing. Conversation with the Kennys. Everybody, please tune in. Ashley, you know, anytime you uh, you need us on there, let let Jay and I know. You know, we're going there and represent. <laughs> do that thing. You know? Um, but yeah, we really appreciate it. All jokes aside, Ash, we love having you on. Love your support. Um, and uh, yeah, anything else we should know? Any things, places you're going to be doing? Any events coming up for you? Not right now. You know, it's summertime. Like I said, um, anybody listening that believes in 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 God and prays, I'm preparing for a board exam. So you know, all well wishes and positive vibes towards that. Um, but yeah, no summer, summer, just enjoying summer, planning trips, listening to places y'all going. So I can go too, you know what I'm saying? Follow, fo follow the lead. I'm looking for some, some places to visit. But yeah, no, everything's really low. Uh, you all know every other Sunday, conversations with the Kennys live on Facebook. You can also follow me on Instagram at Pool of Positivity. That's P O O L E of Positivity, and I'm on TikTok, uh, Doctor Pool of Positivity up there. It's mostly lifestyle stuff, um, instead of like you know content related to mental health but um yeah thank be you all for having me. The TikTok game. she be out there ladies and gentlemen listen seeing a couple of them I'm trying to get on your level you got to teach a class i was thinking about that recently you got to <laughs> teach a class on how to how to keep keep the the, the, the reels going do you v video things like every day or do you kind of like do like 10 videos one day when you prep and how like what's that consistency um, like I don't know what you're talking about, but um, I, I <laughs> <laughs> but typically it's like a probably like a couple of during like on one day because you okay. know from work I'm going to sleep I'm old you know what I mean listen um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah listen um but yeah typically it's like a like on one day I'll try to knock out a few joints so you know but I'm, I listen I'm trying to get on that jet takes you wherever you want to go to the four seasons that's what I need but look sure. as you do that. I'm send it to you. Yeah, listen, you send that. If you need somebody to carry your luggage or something, I'm available. You know what I mean? I'm <laughs> doing my push ups and stuff. So I can carry a whole bunch of luggage on the jet for y'all. I'll stay in the back. <laughs> I don't say anything. I take pictures. All right. I'll come. I, I ain't carrying no luggage. Though. He can carry, carry my luggage too. If it, listen, <laughs> if it's taking me to the four That's seasons. Wish, where, where wishful I'm thinking. Wishful yeah. thinking. <laughs> you know, but no, really, honestly, seriously, though, like, you know, I do hope that. Yeah, that that this goes wherever it needs to go because it's a lot of people 
you know, platforms like this give a lot of people voices and everybody don't need to be heard. But this is definitely a space that you all have created where it's, it's, it's totally balanced. And I, I appreciate that. I appreciate you coming on, though. Definitely. Absolutely. I, I couldn't say it any better. So to everybody listening and watching, we appreciate the support again. Dr. Poole, we appreciate you blessing us with your presence and dropping these gems. Always an amazing conversation. All right. So until next time, Jay, I got you, brother. Later, bro. All right, y'all. All right, guys. See ya. All right. Have a good Take one. Yeah. All right.